I'm here in this uh, cluster of trees that is in pretty much what is otherwise an open meadow area. And this particular cluster of trees um, is a good illustration of a phenomenon that happens here a lot in uh, northern, my part of Northern California. And that is when manzanita tree bushes start to grow in an area, they provide cover for other trees. So the birds land and they drop, you know, bay tree seeds and there's some elderberry in here and uh, some fir, lots of poison oak. And almost any amount of cover, even just a simple fallen log, will provide enough cover for tree seedlings to start and escape the deer. So inside of these manzanita bushes, or clusters of bushes, you'll get these seeds growing up and then eventually it turns into a grove. And as it turns into a grove, the manzanita dies off and you'll find these old skeletons like, um, like this one right here along the ground because the wood is real rot resistant so it lasts for a long time. Anyway, what's really cool is this bu particular bush right here, which is dead in this section, started way back here. <clears throat> so right there, sort of to the right, way back in there though, like by that fern, but to the right of the fern is the base of this manzanita tree. And as it got shaded out by these bigger trees growing that it originally nursed, it fell over and continued to grow and rooted in the ground. So I'm following it here. The thing is super long. So it probably rooted in right here and was able to continue growing. And then it goes this way and then it gets skinny. And then way over here, there's a little live part where it rooted into the ground and kept growing. This is the same trunk. I mean, the thing's gotta be 25, 30 feet long. And then it just keeps going out here <clears throat> and grows way out there into the sun. This is the type of habitat here that we're looking at. And here's the outside edge of this grove where the really long manzanita has stuck its head out. And I just, I don't know pretty much what 10 feet looks like. I guesstimate that this thing is 35 to 40 feet long, and that's not even straightened out. That's just the total distance covered. So if I'm correct that these manzanitas, all these dead manzanitas back in here were the original nurse trees for this whole grove, then they must be pretty old because there's some really big trees in here. Uh, this fir tree here is definitely over two and a half feet in diameter. Sorry, over two feet in diameter, probably around two and a half. And this bay tree here is also pretty large. And most of these manzanita are dead now, um, even right back here among this bay tree. See this? Dead manzanita down here. And then up at the base of this fir tree right down here there's some um, some remnants left but not a lot of a definitely there was a manzanita bush right there i'm often raiding these places for this firewood because it's amazing manzanita is amazing firewood and it's always really dry so this illustrates the whole deal pretty well this manzanita twig right here is off a bush that looks like it probably died just this last year or, or so. If I keep following that back, yeah, there's a dead section. So this is another manzanita. It's at the base of an oak tree that fell over and continued to grow and it nursed along this poison oak bush that's now taking over. And also there's a little fir tree here, a little fir tree here. There are bay seedlings all through these twigs down in here that are, have been nursed by this manzanita tree. There's an oak tree there, another bay, another bay back there, another bay. And then here's another manzanita bush with a bay tree growing up right through the base of it. Now, if we look out here in this open, otherwise open area, 
there are very few seedlings. There's a couple of stunted firs here that have been hit pretty hard by the deer. And all this stuff, the deer would just hit a lot harder. You know, they might come in here and munch on it a little bit, but the stuff's pretty protected in this big tangle. So this is about as big as I'd expect a manzanita and open to get. This one's about 12 feet. And uh, it's only when they start growing horizontally that they grow much longer. This one is nursed, you know, this this oak tree, which has grown tall enough now to be out of the way of deer, so it's going to probably succeed. And then out in here we have all these manzanita seedlings that it's nursed along. This one over here hasn't nursed along as many seedlings for whatever reason, but you can see this phenomenon real well of how it'll stretch out toward the light with these uh, trees here have really kind of shaded it out. And so it's stretching out towards the light, but it doesn't just grow toward the light. The bases seem to be, I think they're actually adapted to kind of crack and bend and fall over. And then these branches way out here towards the light will often root into the ground and create basically what is a new tree and it'll, that will just continue to grow out toward the light. And if we look back in here in this whole grove, you can see a lot of dead manzanita from way back when this whole grove started, including one at the base of this oak tree, which is pretty big. Which came first, the oak tree or the manzanita? I'm gonna guess the manzanita was there first. I'm gonna take a little walk down this uh, finger ridge here. So it's just a finger of land that sticks off from, as you can see either side, it drops down here and over on this side. And the uh, the end of this, this little ridge here has an area of old manzanita that again demonstrates this uh, idea of manzanita succession and forest succession. And there are some large trees here. So there have been trees here for a while. I mean, check out the size of this. I don't know if it really shows up as big as it actually looks in real life, but this, this tree is quite large. Yeah, at least four feet in diameter. But most of these trees are new. And the way I know this is because there's a bunch of manzanita in here and lots of dead manzanita. And manzanita just doesn't, does not grow in the shade under other trees. And that's why we get these sort of manzanita graveyards like this. Um, you can see that one down there is still partially alive, but it's struggling. If we take a walk down the point of this ridge here, really you can just see this story unfold of Manzanitas colonizing this area and then the forestry is taking over uh, with no gratitude whatsoever and just shading out the manzanita so that it dies. Look at this, it's just a big tangle all the way down there to the to where it opens out is just a big tangle of dead manzanita. And uh, you know, uh, hippies and sometimes permaculturists like to think of nature as all mostly cooperation, but uh, competition is a really driving force in these kinds of systems. <clears throat> and you, certainly there is a lot of quote-unquote cooperation where uh, relationships develop and evolve that benefit both parties. But there's also a lot of competition, and this is a really good example. You know, for the Manzanita, it's kind of unfortunate but uh, it's just how it is, so deal with it. And you can see there's just a big face of manzanita, and this skirt of manzanita goes all the way around the end of the ridge. It just keeps going. And, um, you know, if we go and explore under there, we're probably going to find a bunch of seedlings that uh, eventually are going to shoot through that manzanita canopy and shade it out and take over. 
Also along this edge here, there's a strip of ground with no grass growing in it at all. And um, that's, there's a lot of, I think the manzanita may actually have some kind of chemical that it excretes that keeps other stuff from growing. But you can see, look how rich this and thick this duff is. So these guys are also producing a ton of biomass. If we look down inside the, the grove here at all this leaf matter, this stuff is, you know, a good two inches thick of like rich organic matter. So they're also feeding the ground and enriching the soil over time. This band of manzanita is probably about, uh, I don't know, average maybe 15, 20 feet wide. We're just gonna kind of force our way in here. <clears throat> Take a look inside. Cool, got some mushrooms growing in here. Anyway, back in here, looks like there's a lot of honeysuckle growing. That's this green here. And then that's a toyon bush. And toyon's also kind of shrubby, but it'll, it'll grow taller than the manzanita and start to shade it out as well. Um, I'm not seeing a lot else in terms of trees, but this is really, really thick in here. Uh, yeah, there's an oak tree back there see it very well. Right there. And a few things we've already observed in other areas, all the growth points out toward the light away from the forest. This one here starts like that and then it just bends and goes almost horizontally out towards the light. Way out here on the edge you can see this little sprig right here that I'm pulling on is uh, rooted into the ground pretty thoroughly. You see that? <clears throat> so if everything behind this dies, it's basically now its own self-sufficient bush and it's already reaching out towards the light. So this will just continue to grow outward and extend this skirt. Um, so if we follow this back, there's many places where it's rooted in. Here's another one that's rooted in on its own and actually everything behind it, like right here, is already dead, so that's also its own self-sufficient clone now. And in here you can see this fir tree. This big fir tree is growing limbs way down. In fact, there's one all the way on the ground that just lays on the ground and it kind of snakes along here and spreads out towards the light. And, you know, most trees will do that. They don't grow all tall and skinny with no branches if they have adequate light on all sides. So this one on the light side is just growing out and producing a, a ton of shade for everything. Fir trees are really good at that. And there's also a couple of oak trees in here. There's one here, it's about uh, three inches in diameter. And another one out here, right there, that's uh, you know similar, two, three inches in diameter. And uh, pretty soon those will take over and this whole process will just keep going out. All right, well, I'm just being kind of redundant now, so we'll wrap this thing up. But you get the picture. And of course, all through the understory of this whole forest are just skeletons of manzanita.